Welcome to week three, folks. We made it past two exciting weeks of fantasy football. I'm your commissioner, Brent Hesse, alongside former champion Mason Hubler. Fierce division rivals this week. I just got done beating him 131 to 130 in an instant classic of a fantasy football match. We're both 1-1, one one, tied atop our division. Mason does lead on head-to-head -head points four, but it's going to be a shootout the rest of the way. After last week, I did a great job going 4-2 and two in my weekly picks. Picked up after going 2-3-1 and one week one. If, I mean, I got the tie wrong, but you can't really ask me to be <laughs> predicting ties out here. So I consider myself with a winning record at 6-5 and five on the year. So let's see if I can get a, another solid week of predicting matchups alongside my co-host, Mason Hubler. What up? Here we go. The first matchup, the biggest one of the week. Brock Hayden, Zach Wilson, the two undefeated teams. It's going to be a showdown. What do you look for here, Mason? Uh, just looking off, I mean, quarterback battle, I don't really think I'm a fan of either one of these two plays, honestly. <clears throat> Big Ben for Brock and Stafford for Wilson. Big Ben's just so terrible on the road, and Tampa Bay has been so hot. Now, it doesn't mean they're a good defense, but for some reason, Big Ben can't play out of Heinz Field. And Matt Stafford, you know Belichick's going to be diversion, some game plan to stop Matt Patricia and just go all out. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if the Lions scored 14 points or less. Yeah, I get that for sure. Both quarterbacks are playing prime time. They're going to be excited. Both teams are really desperate for a win. Oh, Neither yeah. has gotten on the stat sheet yet in the win column. The guy I like for Brock's team a lot has got to be the man, T.Y. Hilton, baby. The Eagles secondary has been very suspect, giving up big plays to Julio and Deshaun Jackson. T.Y. could capitalize there. But a guy that's going to struggle, Carlos Hyde tonight on Thursday night. It's going to be a low-scoring defensive game. The Jets have done a good job against the run so far this season. I have to agree. I have to agree completely. The only thing is you got to watch out for T.Y. Second day in a row, he still hasn't practiced. Thursdays are normally a big day for uh, you know, limited people, whether they play or not. So really watch out for Friday. But I'm sure Brock is texting T.Y. right now and getting the information, tweeting him, whatever yeah, the case may be. Yeah, he'll make sure that T.Y. is full send. But on uh, Wilson's roster, the players I'm really looking at the most that I think gives him the best advantage over Hayden is the running back combo of Gordon and Drake. Uh, Gordon has a tough matchup, but I think that, one, either they'll keep him in garbage time, or two, they'll get close enough to where Gordon can vulture a touchdown or, or something of the matter. I think Gordon ends up with at least 10, and I think Drake just goes completely off against Oakland. I think he'll get at least 15 to 20. Yeah, Drake really picked up. Owners were questioning his status on the team after week one, but had a much better week two. Michael Thomas leads the NFL in receptions. He's going to do great again. I really like Wilson's team. What do you think about him adding the former Cowboy, Dan the Man Bailey, at kicker? Uh, if you listen to uh, the weekly tip-off on Horizon Radio on Monday, I said I can't wait for Dan Bailey to be wearing a purple helmet on Sunday. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Dan Bailey could be Wilson's highest scorer this week. Trey Burton, he's been struggling. Wilson tried to trade me Trey Burton earlier this <laughs> week. I had to pass it on it, but... They just hate Trey Burton for some reason. Well, they keep talking about getting him involved, but I've, I've seen nothing. The Bears' offense just doesn't create any explosive no. plays. They just try to they don't have matriculate the ball down the field. field in yeah. my opinion. They just all are mid-range mid -range kind of games. Well, I don't think <clears throat> Trubisky knows how to stretch the field, but that's yeah. a topic for another day. <laughs> what do you think the um, outcome of this one's going to be? Oh, Who's uh, going to be sitting atop the division? I think Wilson just got way too much star power. I mean, his wide receivers, are, the wide receivers are pretty close. Running backs, Wilson's dominate. Flex tight end, I really like Wilson. I'm going to go Wilson 115. Nah, man, we'll do 110 to Brock's 87. Yeah, I like Wilson as well here. We expect Wilson to go to two wins and one tie, dropping Brock to two wins and one loss. In the other matchup in this division, two very desperate teams, Joe and Noah. They're both used to being here near the bottom <laughs> of the standings, but that doesn't change the fact they're trying to get out of the bottom of the standings. Only one will be able to do it this week. What are you looking for? Uh, I'm looking for the remote to change the channel so I don't have to watch this shit matchup. Just, they have stars. I mean, Howard Barkley, Fournette, Keenan Allen, but 
I mean, where do you all get this roster out? The waiver wire can't be this bad. Yeah, there's really nobody in between. It's looked like it seems like they drafted the first two rounds of the fantasy draft, and then they just went away until like round Absolutely. eight. Absolutely. Absolutely. Joe is uh, probably needing to work on his form for beer bitch next year, if I had to guess. Emma Robbie. Robbie's doing a great job with a head start on that one. But whenever I look at this matchup, especially for Noah's team, the guy that really shoots out for me, it's Jordan Howard. He hasn't been getting too much going on the ground so far this season, but Nagy came out and said he wants to get him more involved. Tariq Cohen did not finish the game. He may not play, which would give Howard even more work. They are playing against Arizona. Should be plenty of opportunities for Howard. Noah's recently just said that he plans on Jarvis Landry getting 12 catches for 112 yards, 12 rushing yards, and one touchdown. So Noah's really manifesting the 1-2 tonight for Jarvis Landry. <laughs> Do you see Jarvis having that kind of night? Uh, with a bum ankle or hamstring or whatever he's got? No. Absolutely not. I mean, Jarvis will get his 6 for 60, and if he vultures a touchdown, he vultures a touchdown. But I don't see any 112 in, in Landry's night. I just don't. And for Noah, it's really surprising. He still has Jamal Williams in the lineup. He's not impressed so far in the first two weeks, and now Aaron Jones will be in the mix. This week, I still expect Jamal Williams to have the majority of the share of the backfield, but Jones will be eating into what Williams was a very small role he had carved out to begin with. I don't really think Jamal Williams is going for more than four or five points this week. No, absolutely not. And if I was Noah, I mean, sorry, dude, your team's not very good. If I'm Noah in a must-win situation, I'm throwing a dart throw and starting Callaway over Jamal Williams. Callaway Callaway's tonight. got big play explosiveness. I don't know if you would start two Browns receivers, but yeah, that's Cal- crazy. Callaway's definitely got ten times the upside that Jamal Williams has, in my opinion. Joe is predicting it's going to be all Callaway, <laughs> baby. Yeah. Just live tweets coming in from my feed. Joe's really liking Callaway. Yeah. We'll see if Noah ends up pulling the trigger here before kickoff tonight. But uh, on Joe's side, um, Leonard Fournette kind of scares me. I've got him in some leagues, but his limited ter- uh, practice and his uh, history with soft tissue injuries is not good for Fournette. So I could see them maybe even dialing back his carries, maybe more just red zone, you know, short short yardage work. And Adrian Peterson, you never know what you're going to get from him. I mean, is the Redskins, so. Just too much unpredictability in Joe's, you know, in fantasy you want more consistent players, and I'm just I'm not on board with Joe's team. I feel like it's all hit or miss. And Noah is saying now that he may play Callaway in the flex, so we have ongoing reports and just a lot of news coming in during this segment. We'll have to keep you up to date on any happenings that occur throughout the rest of this broadcast. But on Joe's side, I really like Cam Newton. The Bengals' defense, while stout, has given up big plays and big points to both Andrew Luck and Joe Flacco. Cam Newton, he's been all right so far this year, but he always has a time around here where he really has a big game, and I think this could be the week for it. Adrian Peterson, though, going up against Green Bay, that's going to be a negative game script, not good for Peterson's value at all. We saw how CT crunchy was against the Colts. I don't like Peterson here at all. Yeah, and if I'm just handing out free advice, I throw a Geo in AP spot and fucking throw a dart at some of this bench trash you got. I mean, Whether, Kenny Stills, who traded for him, yeah, might try to get some value there, right? Absolutely. I mean, I just don't think AP is going to be able to do it for you. Green Bay's always has a decent run defense, too, in my opinion. They always have a good D-line. Um, so, yeah, I definitely do not like Adrian Peterson this week in any, any scenario. Regardless, though, <coughs> the Fitz Magic show is going to be out and about Monday night for Noah. Joe may need to be up 30. I don't think he will be. I think Noah takes this one and gets to 1-1-1, one, one and one, same as the Browns tonight. Uh, yeah, I have to agree. I think uh, I think Saquon bounces back. I think he's a little bit more consistent. I doubt he has 14 receptions again. But I like uh, Saquon, to, Saquon and Howard to just power Noah's team. And then, like Brent said, the Monday night fits magic. Uh, he's throwing at least three touchdowns to Mike Evans and O.J. Howard in total. So he'll finish with six total. So I love Fitzmagic this week, and I love having a little Monday night flair into the, the matchup. Always helps with the the, the battle. So I'll take Noah. You, oh, got yeah. a, you got a score prediction? There you have I have no score prediction. I just like to pick the winners here, but I think it's going to be Noah in a defensive battle. In the next matchup, we're going straight to Mason and I's division with Show Me Your Johnson versus the Nancy Miller crew. Both teams at 1-1, one and one, coming off a tough loss after starting the year 1-0. and oh. For Show Me Your Johnson... 
is Deshaun Watson and Rob Gronkowski this week. These two guys have both started off with one good game, one bad game so far. I like Watson a lot against the Giants. Even Dak Prescott was able to throw for a touchdown against him. Hey, hey, hey. And Gronkowski, he's playing up against Matt Patricia. You're going to bet on a couple Gronk spikes on Sunday night. Yeah, I'm going to be sick watching Sunday night football. Gronk's, Gronk's at least getting two. Like, if Gronk gets anything less than 15, I will be ecstatic. Just absolutely thrilled. And, of course, the man of the hour, Keelan Cole, with the snag of the season, is now inserted into the flex. I do like that play. I don't think he'll repeat his heroic acts that he had against the Patriots, but definitely not Eric's worst start of the week. His worst start has to go to LaShawn McCoy playing against <laughs> – uh, I think I picked LaShawn McCoy as his worst start now all three weeks. But playing against that Minnesota Vikings defense, he's got broken ribs or something. And now he's got people like Chris Ivory and some random dude that I've never heard of vulturing points from him. I don't Jeez, like McCoy at all. Yeah. But you can't blame him. His running back depth is terrible. Tariq Cohen hasn't been what people thought he was going to be. Really limited work. Jalen Rashard's nothing more than a dart throw. Frank Gore, does, you know, he is what he is. He's a, you know, RB4, get you five to six points and maybe fall into the end zone, just like LeGarrette Blunt, Who got ejected <clears throat> last week. Yeah. While on the sideline, I will admit that. He, Crazy. He, he did get ejected for, you know, blindsiding somebody. But <laughs> while on the side, he wasn't even in the game. It's so. awesome. But, hey, you got to stick up for your guy. So, hey, kudos to him. But, and um, for Mason, I think – your team, obviously, Tyreek Hill is one of the premier receivers in the league, and he has just been phenomenal. If they try to put Richard Sherman on him, that's going to be a disaster. See, uh, yeah, if he can't keep up with Goodwin, there's no way he's keeping up with fucking Hill at yeah. all. There's no shot. Hill and Evans is a crazy good wide receiver combo. Both of them had a couple question marks. That's why they weren't like mid-tier or high-tier wide receiver ones, but both were considered in that high two or – Low one range to start the year. They both look like mid to high ones at this point. you got to like both of those guys in your starting lineup. What I question is James White in the starting lineup over Deion Lewis. But I guess either one of them, both receiving backs. James White did get a lot of work last week, a lot more than Burkhead and Michelle. But I think they'll both cut into his work this week. I don't think James White will be as effective. Yeah. <clears throat> Dion plays Jacksonville, and they're kind of the same mold back. So you could think, you know, the Titans will get down and Jackson will play, or White will play a lot, or I'm sorry, Lewis will play a lot. But still, that the Jacksonville linebacker core is ridiculous. Even after losing uh, Puz Lesney, Paul Puz Lesney after uh, retirement, I mean, they still have Telvin Smith and Miles Jack. Like, their defense is really good. And White's been pretty consistent. Ten points week one, eight points last week. That's uh, – a little bit more consistent with Dion. Dion only put up four last week. So that was my thought process behind that. But honestly, I, I don't think it'll matter. I think uh, when it comes to Monday, or I think even Sunday night, I think the game will pretty much be in hand. Plus, I have Evans and Howard on Monday. So I think I may need five points, five to ten points from Howard and Evans combined Monday night to get the win. So I'm not overly concerned about it, but it, it'll be interesting to see why you get a shot in the starting line. Yeah, I, I do project you to win this one, Mason. You've gone for 130 in both the two games so far. Unfortunately, last week, 130 was not enough. It's terrible. But your team is explosive. I don't think they're going to show any signs of slowing down this week. I'm sure you're predicting yourself to win, and I'm also predicting you to win, moving you to 2-1 and one on the division, dropping Show Me Your Johnson down to two L's on the yeah. year. Week one, Kamara. Week two, Mahomes. Week three, Gronk's going to have at least three scores. Like, I'm just going to go foregone conclusion for three scores. But Mason's team does have the firepower to try to counteract that. Stay tuned. It'll be a good one to watch. The other matchup of the division is your commish, BotKicker.com versus reigning beer bitch, two <laughs> girls, one Cooper Cup. One Cooper Cup. It's going to be a good one, though. I think right off the bat, we're both one and one. I think we have the two top quarterbacks in fantasy this week. Tom Brady going against his old DC. Mahomes going against the Niners that have gotten lit up by Cousins and by Stafford. I think it's hard to pick which one's going to have more points, but I think they're going to be the two highest scoring fantasy quarterbacks this week. I'll tell you right now, it's going to be Mahomes. The San Francisco defense is a fucking joke. 
just a joke. And I think San Francisco will score enough points where Kansas City continues to throw the ball even late into the third quarter. 14 points. I mean, they'll be up 28-14 at least going into the third. So you got to like that for Mahomes' outlook <clears throat> if he hasn't thrown for more already. Go, going through the rest of my lineup, what do you like? What do you not like, Mason? Uh, well, after seeing Tevin Coleman run rough shot last week over the fucking uh, Panthers defense, which Zeke couldn't even do, uh, I really like him against the Saints. Uh, it depends. I'll be interested to see what Edo Smith does. Um, you know, I, I don't think he'll take a lot. I still think Coleman will get all the goal line. I think it'll be more of a, oh, I need a break, bring in Edo Smith kind of thing. Um, Kareem Hunt, obviously, the Mahomes-Hunt combo is good. Mahomes, or Hunt even had a down week, but obviously that's because Mahomes had the six passing touchdowns, so obviously I think they'll look to get Hunt rebounding. I think he'll get at least 75 and two scores. Um, Adams, mm, I'm sure he's going to see Josh Norman the entire game because who the hell else would he guard? So that'll be interesting to see, but Adams still is a big-bodied receiver for not having the height. He, I think he really boxes out well. And then uh, Aguilar and Ertz. Against the Colts, I mean, jeez. If Luck <clears throat> luck runs with his hair on fire again in the second half, same thing with San Francisco. I think Indy will do just enough to keep the game where they have to continue to pass, which obviously help you in this situation. And then Matt Breed is a, a dart throw, but I love the upside of him um, against Kansas City's suspect defense. Yeah, Kansas City right. has given up some special <coughs> passing yards out of the backfield while leading in the second half to both Connor and especially to Eckler and Gordon week one. So... Uh, it seems like you like mostly positive things from my side. Mitch is going to have to score a lot to keep up then. But he definitely has the horses to do it. Kamara, maybe one of, one of the top three best RBs so far in the league. He's got the Atlanta Falcons. It really doesn't even matter matchups for Kamara. He seems to always have great games. Then you've got the Tom Brady-Chris Hogan connection, which came alive for two touchdowns last week. And the Detroit Lions defense, well, maybe without Darius Slay, which yeah. could be huge for them. He's got Kelsey, and he's got Watkins currently on the bench, but those two could be the guys to steal points from Mahomes. If it's a big Kelsey and Watkins week, that could hurt my chances against Mitch's team. I mean, I think it's a really interesting matchup. I don't think it's going to be as close as you think. I think, not saying Patricia comes out and shuts Tom Brady down, because very rarely do teams shut Tom Brady down. But I don't know if shut down is the right word, but definitely I think a limit. I mean, after coaching in New England for so many years, you have to know Brady's tendencies, what he likes to call, his checks, his audibles. And I think Detroit has enough talent on defense. Now, obviously, if Slay doesn't play, it's going to be a lot different. But Brady definitely, I don't think, has the you know 350 and three score games that we're usually used to seeing. I think, it, I think he throws maybe one or two picks. Uh, I think Patricia will try to blitz him early, get the ball out of his hand. But outside of uh, Kamara, I really don't, and Kelsey, of course, I don't really like Mitch's matchups. Um, the Giants normally have a pretty decent run defense. Zeke, they held Zeke under 100 yards uh, again. Um, and I'm just not high on Hogan for some reason. He just doesn't have that big playability he had the past two years. And uh, Cooper Cup's got a good matchup, I will say that. But you just never know. The Los Angeles Rams have so many options in that offense. It's hard for one player to define a real role outside of Todd Gurley, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like Goff really likes the, the Brandon Cooks connection. I mean, Cooks is already over 250 yards on the season. So um, I think it'll be – I think Brent will win, but I don't – I think it might be a little tighter than, than I think. So. Yeah, I think the big one will be that Adams and Cobb, if Cobb stays in the lineup, I think Adams will be the guy that can go for a lot more yards and score two more than Cobb. That really put it away for me. I'm picking myself to win again and move to 2-1. and one. I expect me and Mason to both be 2-1, and one, tied atop the division after this week. The next matchup is Josh Gordon versus All I Do is Wentz. One of the more lopsided matchups I've seen in recent history. Jeez. I mean, Walker's team has just been plagued with injuries and just crazy things happening left and right. He still fought back to field actually a more formidable roster than most would given the circumstances, but it's been tough. Meanwhile... Apple has hit on every single draft pick so far, especially in those early rounds. I mean, just the first five players on this list, Drew Brees, Todd Gurley, Christian McCaffrey, Stephon Diggs, Juju Smith-Schuster, he doesn't really need anybody else beyond those five. They all put up big numbers every single week. Apple, you're still a bum. You had one good draft. Get over it. Apple has yet to win the championship. He's been close a couple times. Could this be the year? It's still very far out, but Apple's team is looking good. 
but we got a long ways to go, and it's only two weeks in. Maybe all I do is wince and knock him off the trail this week. Holy, the upset. The thing I like about all I do is wince is Antonio Brown's going to be pissed. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I'd hate to be a Tampa Bay corner. Fuck that. But it's going to be Antonio Brown versus Smith Schuster on Monday night, which is what it could all come down to. Also, Deshaun, Deshaun Jackson, Jackson playing for all I do is wince, the leading receiver in terms of yards in the NFL so far. So all I do is wince has set himself up with – at least a high upside team. I love this high upside. I was just thinking the same thing. You got Crunch and Deshaun Jackson, and I love the Ted Ginn dart throw. Ted yeah, the fucking Ted Ginn, Ginn dart throw. You know you're an underdog, but you know you just have to play to your team's strength. There's Absolutely. no there's no floor plays here. They're all ceiling plays, and yeah. I like that a lot. I love that. Carson Wentz coming back. You could play golf again, but he's just going to go full. He's going to go with the guy he started with, and that's Carson Wentz I right love, off the I gate. Love, that. love the Ted Ginn dart throw. Yeah, it's – you know, this is a sign of a good fantasy owner. While he's his back's against the wall, his chip count is low, he's not going down without swinging, and I like that a lot. He's got 8-9 off suit, and he's all in, baby. Yeah. He's all in. Do you, Which one of those guys do you think has the best chance of popping between Evan Ingram, Ted Ginn, CT Crunch? Sheesh. Uh, you know, I don't really kind of like Ted Ginn this week. Uh, ATL's defense is banged up. They've obviously lost uh, Deion Jones and um, – the safety, I can't think of his name right now. Uh, Keanu Neal. Yeah, Keanu Neal, uh, starting safety. So they're obviously down some some key core players. And uh, the Saints are obviously, you know, Saints-Falcons is normally always a shootout. Always a shootout. You're playing in a dome, so you don't have to worry about weather or any of that shit. Unless Ted Ginn drops, like, his normal drop on the 50-yard bomb that Breeze throws perfectly that basically hands it to him, I love Ted Ginn. Yeah, he'll get a chance. It's just whether he can bring it down in the breadbasket or not. Absolutely. I, I love the high upside plays because uh, really, you know, outside of that, he doesn't really have a shot to win. <laughs> yeah, because for one, I mean, as we mentioned, his team is not at full strength even yeah. without Mixon this week. Mm-hmm. But Happel's team is just a juggernaut. I correctly predicted he was going to be the highest scorer last week, and he did that easily going for over 150 points. Incredible. I don't think he gets 150 again this week nah. because I think a lot of his players have tougher matchups. But I, I do suspect Happel to be the winner. I think the guy that does it for him is going to be Smith Schuster again. I think there's enough mouse to feed between Smith Schuster and Brown. I think Smith Schuster might even get the better of Brown again this week. He certainly did against Kansas City. I mean, it's hard to say Gurley's not going to be your team's highest scorer, but I think Smith Schuster could do it. The lowest I think is going to be Lockett, just because he's kind of the odd man out there. He's not a bad player, especially with Baldwin out, but. That when you're comparing all the other weapons. And I even think Njoku's got a chance to do well tonight without Josh Gordon now. Njoku is going to be more of a focal point on the offense. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, you know, looking at Happel's matchups, I mean, outside of obviously Breeze and Gurley, I mean, Diggs is going to face Tredavious White, the number one corner in Buffalo. I'm not saying he's going to have a terrible game, but I could see him maybe getting 40 yards, no touchdown. Maybe getting, maybe tuning down a little bit. Um McCaffrey, you know, he's always going to be a decent play because of his volume alone. Like, the receptions and the catches are, you know, obviously C.J. Anderson hasn't really done anything to, you know, oh, I need the ball more. But Cincinnati's got a sneaky good defense, I think. So I could see him limiting that. Uh, like Brent said, Smith-Schuster could outperform Brown again. That's no question. But Ninjoku has been very disappointing so far to start this season. And Tyler Lockett, I don't think we'll have a big game down the field because, like Ted Ginn, his main focus is big plays. And I just don't think Russell Wilson's going to have enough time to throw the ball to let those big plays develop. Um, Dallas's defensive line's been on fire the first two weeks. And just like the Giants line, the Seattle line has a lot of injuries, a very inconsistent play. Um, I think I don't think Russell will have a lot of time to look downfield. So are you – are you calling the upset, or do you got? Uh, I think I am going to have to go with the upset. Now, with that said, Walker's going to have to have obviously all his dart throws hit. Like, but I really do. I, I think Walker pulls off the upset. Incredible! This Mason has talked himself. Me and Mason have talked him, him into picking the upset with all I do is wins. I'm still going to have to roll with Josh Gordon, but I do really respect Walker's play. I think he's given himself a fighting chance, and you know I'll have to give you props, Mason, if if. Walker pulls this one off. Stay he, tuned. He's got a puncher shot. He's and in the last matchup of the season, it's Pearl Barber versus Odell No. You know. Both Robbie, terrible team names. I'm just going to say that. Robbie, right Robbie Burns' team has been terrible so far this year. Absolutely putrid. Horrendous. 
hard to watch, hard to look at. But I think this week could be his week. You know, he came <clears> close <throat> against Ben Walker, but Odell Beckham, his superstar, his savior, couldn't even get him over the hump. It's Odell's defense, boy. <laughs> and here we have Pearl Barber, who is riding with the Peyton Barber himself for another Jeez, week. Ben, carry on and, and Barber? Yeah, just tough running backs. Jeez. They somehow get worse every time I look at them. But it's the same story. Pearl Barber has the big three, Rodgers, Julio, Hopkins. He's moving Amari Cooper into his lineup, the first major scam of the season, so I like that. <laughs> yeah, Joe, you're an idiot. <laughs> but that's besides the point. So. I do like that. I like Cooper in the lineup. I don't really know what else to say about this team. His running backs are terrible. The rest of his team is pretty decent. Jimmy Graham, he's just hoping for the Rodgers to Graham touchdown combo. At least one Ben knows how to throw a dart throw and actually make it stick to the wall. Yeah. The other one's throwing the dart the wrong way. The one thing I do like, this is a second straight week. Second straight week, Ben Sherudy is going with the Thursday night home team for his defense slot, picking the Browns. The Bengals defense came alive last week, helped him out. It wasn't enough against Austin Happel's dynamite squad. But the Browns defense tonight... I do like that play. Eh, meh, meh, yeah. Better than the Bengals at uh, Carolina, so I don't know. It's okay. I don't know uh, if I'm all in on the whole Thursday night defense thing. I mean, most games are shit show, but you'll get the occasional lopsided just smoke fest. But it usually is the home team doing the smoke fest. That is true. It's not a bad play. I like it. It's a little trend that I've noticed from you, Ben J. So... Do, yeah. You got to do something to keep this team afloat. Overall, it's not the best-looking roster. But it is a better-looking roster than this one we got beside it, which features Dalvin. Is it, though? It's, I think it's a better roster. Will it be better this week? Hard to say. But this one, it's got Dalvin Cook, who is in a timeshare, it seems like, with Latavius Jeez, Murray. Don't say that. Yeah, it's don't awful. Don't on the camera. Odell Beckham Jr., Jeez. who... I don't even know if he... Where was that guy last week? Has Odell ran anything more than a slant this season? He's damn good at slants, though. Yeah, he is good at slants. <laughs> but yeah, this is not the, not the same normal deep play you've been you know used to seeing OB, OBJ make over the years. Just I haven't really seen that explosiveness. That Somebody he's... that does have explosiveness, Will Fuller, called up into the starting lineup. He has caught a touchdown pass in every single game where he's had Deshaun Watson as his quarterback. You see that changing this week? Meh. I mean, if Tavon Austin can get one over on the Giants, I'm sure Will Fuller can. You know, uh, I might. I think that is easily my favorite play of Robbie's yeah. this week. Will Fuller. He also has good one against the Chiefs. That could be a matchup to exploit as well. Robbie, brother, your running backs are fucking terrible. But Alex Smith against the Packers, do we like that one? I don't like that. I one. haven't liked Alex Smith since he left Kansas City. He may be a system quarterback, and Andy Reid just a fucking guru but I, I mean obviously he doesn't have the weapons he had in Kansas City I mean like Josh Doxson that guy's on the waiver wire now that's but, all CT Crunch and Jordan Reed yeah, so far the check down extraordinaire I mean it's just they just don't have the weapons and I think Andy Reed really you know boosted his play more than more than it, you know he should have but yeah I think it's I think it's going to be close because I do like both their sets of wide receivers, I hate both their sets of running backs. But when it comes down to it, am I picking Alex Smith over Aaron Rodgers? I am not. I'm giving this one to Pearl Barber. Yeah, halfway through uh, Brent going over Ben's team, I was like, yeah, maybe I could get behind, you know, Robbie's team and really push him. But, no, this – I don't like the matchups. Dalvin's banged up. Freeman's playing Baltimore. He always has a good run defense. But, yeah, the wide receivers are good. But, I mean – Ben's just got so much star power at the wide receiver position. Marcus Goodwin's kind of had some hamstring issues, um, which, you know, could could flare up at any minute. You never know. But, yeah, I just I just can't do it. I'm going to have to go with Ben. And there you ben have it. Shaw. That's the week three prediction. So we both have me, Mason, Noah, Wilson, and Sharuti winning. Where we split, I've got Happel. He's got the underdog, Ben Walker. Stay tuned to find out which one of us ends up with a better record and will I finish above 500 for the second straight week. It's going to be great. It starts tonight. Browns, Jets. 
If you can keep your eyes open through that whole one, congrats, <laughs> you're officially a football fan. Stay tuned for next week. Peace out. This is the Goat League.